Hey everybody. Today we're talking about odds and odds ratios. Odds are just an intuitive way of describing the chances that an event will occur. Roughly speaking, the odds of an event are the frequency with which the event occurs divided by the frequency with which it does not occur. Simple example, if the odds of an event are two-thirds, or two to three, then on average, the event's going to occur twice for every three times it does not. Here's a slightly more mathematical definition. The odds of an event are p divided by 1 minus p, if p is the probability of that the event is going to occur. For instance, if you're rolling a six-sided die and the event you're interested in is getting a 1, the probability is 1 in 6, the odds are 1 in 5, uh, or 0.2, because there's one way it can occur and five ways it can fail to occur. Obviously, if you know the probability of an event, then you know the odds of the event, and vice versa. So here's a visualization showing the relationship between probability, which runs from 0 to 1, and odds, which can go from 0 to infinity. In particular, the odds of an impossible event, just like the probability of an impossible event, is 0. And odds increase as probabilities increase. It's helpful to remember that if an event has 50-50 chances, 50% probability, then it has odds of 1. And unlikely events, probability less than 50%, have odds less than 1, while likely events, probability greater than 50%, have odds greater than 1. The simplest rough and ready way to interpret the odds of an event is as the number of occurrences expected for every non-occurrence. For instance, if the odds of an event are 7 halves, or 3.5, then on average, the event is going to occur 3.5 times for every time that it doesn't. In this case, of course, the probability is 7 ninths. Um, when I see an odds of 7 to 2, I'm thinking 7 occurrences, 2 non-occurrences, 9, 9 total. So the probability of 77.8% corresponds to the odds of 3.5. Gamblers often describe the odds of an event not happening, the odds against an event. For instance, if you see that, the, um, that a horse has 9 to 1 odds, or 9 odds in a race, it's expected to lose 9 times for every 1 time it wins. Its probability of losing is thought to be 90%, its probability of winning is thought to be 10%. The odds ratio is a common and powerful way of comparing probabilities between groups. For instance, in um, medical experiments or observational studies. It's computed exactly like you'd expect. You take the odds of the first event, and you divide that by the odds of the second event to get the odds ratio. Here's a simple example. Suppose that in city A, it rains one-fifth of days, and on city, in city B, it rains two-sevenths of days. So the odds are one-fourth and two-fifths, one to four and two to five, respectively. For instance, in city A, it's expected to rain one day for every four days it does not. We compute the odds ratio between those two cities just by dividing one-fourth and two-fifths. And we do a little simple arithmetic, and we get five-eighths, which is 0.625. Because that number is less than one, we interpret it to mean that the odds of rain in city A um, are less than the odds of rain in city B. It rains less in city A than city B on average. Here's a few more facts about odds ratios that can help build a little intuition into what an odds ratio actually is and what it means. Odds ratios, like odds, can range from zero to infinity. The more likely the first event is and compared to the second, the higher the odds ratio. If you have an odds ratio of one, then the two events are equally likely. And if you flip the order of that you're considering the events, then that's gonna give you the reciprocal of the odds. It's gonna flip the odds ratio. So in that last example, the odds ratio between A and B was 5 eighths. The odds ratio between B and A would be 8 fifths. Odds ratios are particularly common in medicine, where researchers often need to compare probabilities of rare events, like certain diseases, across different groups, like different age categories. And when you're in a situation looking at something rare, like a rare disease, a random sample from your population very well could fail to include even a single occurrence of the condition. And so relative probabilities of the group in, of the, in the two groups might not be apparent. On the other hand, it's comparatively easy in many cases to get samples of patients that have the diagnosis 
and don't. And then you can compute relative counts in the two groups and compute an odds ratio relatively directly. Let's see an example like that. Suppose you have a researcher that wants to know if people who voted in the last election are as likely to have a rare disorder as those who didn't vote. So they go out and they get a random sample from that population of size 50. They get 20 voters and 30 non-voters, but none of them have the diagnosis. So again, not you can't really do much with this in terms of computing relative risks between these two groups because you got no occurrences. So the researcher contacts the local health department and is able to contact 25 people that do have the diagnosis. And you can imagine this as representing maybe even the entire population that has been diagnosed with this condition in that city or state or other municipality. Of those 25 people that they have with the diagnosis, 12 voted in the last election. Now the researcher is actually able to compute some odds and therefore odds ratios. First, the observed odds of disorder of having the disorder for voters. So we have 12 people with the disorder total and 20 people without. Similarly, among non-voters, the observed odds are 13 over 30, 13 to 30, because we have 13 people that um, have the disorder, disorder among non-voters and 30 people uh, and 30 people that do not have it among non-voters. Now we can compute the odds ratio for voters to non-voters, people with the condition, by dividing those two numbers, and we get 1.4. That number is a little bit bigger than one. We interpret that to mean that the disorder is somewhat more prevalent among voters than non-voters, at least in this sample. It's a mathematical fact that for rare events, like rare diseases, the odds ratio gives a good approximation to relative risk which of course is the ratio of probabilities for occurrence between the two groups. And frequently in medical literature, you'll see odds ratios computed and taken to be approximations for that relative risk. And this is called the rare disease assumption.